Welcome to the first tutorial in the introduction to spatial agent-based models for social environmental systems. This first tutorial will answer the question, what are agent-based models? And also, why are they particularly useful tools for modeling social environmental systems? I'm Dr. Nicholas Maglioko, Assistant Professor in the Department of Geography at the University of Alabama and the Director of the Laboratory for Human Environment Interactions, Modeling and Analysis. Our research focuses on land use change and coupled with human and natural systems. I've applied agent-based modeling to study topics as diverse as urban growth, food and energy water nexus, and agricultural commodity supply chains. I've been using agent-based modeling to study social environmental systems for over a decade now, and I'm glad to be sharing some basics of agent-based modeling with you in this tutorial. The first goal of this tutorial is to make the case for why agent-based models, or ABMs, are a useful tool for studying social environmental systems. Second, I will describe what ABMs are and some of the key principles of ABMs that make them different from other modeling approaches for social environmental systems research. Let's take a moment to define a social environmental system. This is one of my favorite satellite images because there are multiple social and environmental systems intertwined within our view. The river system, seen here in, outlined in blue, includes the hydrologic system interacting with floodplain ecosystems to support water-dependent flora and fauna. These environmental systems are dependent on river flows, which are shaped by weather, climate, and fluvial processes. The social systems, seen here outlined in green, orange, and purple, include both rain-fed and irrigated agriculture and small settlements. To varying degrees, these social systems are dependent on agricultural technology, the regional economy, and local food production and changing demographics. Both systems, the social and environmental, are linked through their codependence on water. Changes in one system, be it floods and droughts, or land use change, affect the other system. Due to the pervasive human use of land, changes to social environmental systems are typically caused by human modification or appropriation of social environmental systems. These modifications often impact the functioning of environmental systems and can create feedbacks that impact the functioning of social systems, sometimes in unintended and undesirable ways. Managing social environmental systems, then, depends on understanding how people make decisions that lead to modifications of environmental systems, how those modifications create feedbacks that impact people, and how subsequent decision-making changes in response to those impacts. Understanding human decision-making is not just an academic pursuit. It is also essential for anticipating likely behavioral responses to changing conditions, which is critical for avoiding unintended consequences of policy and management interventions. Of course, this is easier said than done with complex systems like social environmental systems. We need tools capable of handling such complexity to help us explore the implications of possible interventions before undesirable feedbacks are created. Age-based models have become a popular tool for studying social environmental systems because they have the capability to explicitly represent human decision-making in flexible and context-dependent ways. Applications range from simple toy models, which are stylized representations of real systems, to high-fidelity models of entire housing or stock markets. So what are ABMs? Let's start first with the agents. An agent is an autonomous, adaptive decision-making entity. Agents can be many things, individual fish, people, households, government agencies, or even entire countries. Each agent interacts with its environment and other agents through prescribed behavioral roles to produce emergent system-level patterns. Take, for example, the Boyd's model, which is one of the first agent-based models ever developed. With two simple behavioral roles, maintain a certain distance, and specified orientation with your nearest neighbor, complex emergent behaviors such as flocking or schooling can be recreated. The agent-based approach originates from the field of complex system science, specifically the study of complex adaptive systems. At the core of this approach is the conceptualization of complex systems as the emergent result of many interactions among the system's lower level components. Five key principles guide our understanding of how lower level interactions create higher level systems. Heterogeneity, self-organization, emergence, collective behavior, and adaptation. Let's take a moment to explore each of these key ideas in more depth. First, heterogeneity can be defined as the quality or state of being diverse in character or content. In the context of age-based modeling, we are particularly interested in heterogeneity among agents' attributes. These can include age, race, income level, experience, preferences, aspirations, geographic location, and any other salient differences among agents one might want to model. In this example, we can see spatial heterogeneity in both income levels, housing prices, and housing density. Agents could be heterogeneous in the number, types, and intensity of their interactions with other agents or their environment. Environmental heterogeneity is observed over both space and time. 
For example, resource availability may vary seasonally with periods of higher or lower precipitation. And spatial heterogeneity is particularly pronounced in human-modified landscapes, which are best described as complex mosaics of natural land cover and human land uses. In socio-environmental systems, environmental heterogeneity is produced by, and influences, heterogeneity among agents. Generally, the more diverse the agents, their modes of interaction, and their environment, the greater the diversity of system-level behaviors that can emerge. Speaking of emergence, we can define it as a system-level property that no individual system component possesses alone, and which results from interactions among components with the whole system. As an example, let's go back to the Boyd's model applied to flocking behavior. Beginning with agents randomly distributed in space and equipped with two simple behavioral rules, coherent flocking behavior emerges through continual interactions among agents in which each individual gradually adjusts its distance and orientation to its nearest neighbors. Importantly, the resulting flocking behavior that emerges is not predictable from initial conditions. Only once the agents interact with one another can higher order behaviors emerge. Emergence is a defining trait of complex systems and an essential ingredient for adaptive behavior. The process through which system level behaviors emerge from interactions among system components is referred to as self-organization. As a demonstration, here's a recreation of the self-organized process of ant trail formation during foraging. Each individual ant departs from the central nest, exploring the surrounding space in a random walk. Once an ant locates food, the three circles surrounding the nest, it returns to the nest leaving a pheromone trail, seen here in white and green highlights. The pheromones guide the direction of other ants' movements, and each successful ant returning to the nest reinforces the pheromone trail, creating a stable, coherent, and efficient ant colony foraging behavior. Of course, self-organization can occur at any system level. For example, reinforcing interactions among specialized cells in our bodies support organ functioning, or multiple interactions among individuals can result in an organized protest, and individual protest groups can coordinate to create a social movement. Self-organization, then, is the foundation of emergent collective behavior. A classic example of coordinated collective behavior is a murmuration of starlings. Although each individual bird is heterogeneous in its physical characteristics and abilities, a coherent and adaptive flocking behavior can emerge from their interactions. Such collective behavior is quite a bit more complicated with humans, with greater heterogeneity in our attributes, perceptions, and motivations, but the principles of emergence and self-organization are still fundamental to collective behavior and are at the core of the agent-based modeling paradigm. Finally, emergence and self-organization are what enable complex systems to be adaptive. Adaptation is a complex system's ability to reorganize its internal structure and or alter its behavior to respond to changes in its environment. The environmental cognitions framework is useful for thinking about this process in the context of human adaptation to environmental change. Environmental cognitions include the decision-making process and various factors that influence decision-making, such as attitudes, beliefs, and values used to select a behavioral option. That behavior affects a change in the environment, and if that change is substantial, may create a discernible feedback to environmental conditions, which in turn affect environmental cognitions. Adaptation emerges when a decision-making entity is able to change beliefs, values, attitudes, and or perceptions in ways that lead to new behaviors to respond to changing environmental conditions. This process can give rise to unexpected changes in the decision-maker's behavior, the environment, and the socio-environmental system as a whole. Given these fundamental principles, there are some important differences between ABMs and other modeling approaches that I want to highlight. First, ABMs are often referred to as bottom-up models. In other words, the system state, whether it is how many houses for sale, how much water discharge at a watershed outlet, or yields of corn at harvest, is a result of interactions among the system's components. To continue the examples, these interactions might be between home buyers and sellers in a market, vegetation and water particles in a watershed, or plot characteristics and farming techniques in a field. Importantly, ABMs do not calculate or simulate changes to a system state directly, but rather let the system state emerge by explicitly simulating the interaction processes among system components. As such, ABMs are referred to as process-based models. This distinction between process-based and pattern-based modeling is a key concept for social environmental modeling. Let's take a closer look at what constitutes a process-based model. First, let's start with the basic question, what is a process? A process is any mechanism that causes a system to change its state and so potentially to produce characteristic patterns. For ABMs of social environmental systems, we are specifically talking about processes through which agents interact with one another and modify environmental systems, 
and the subsequent emergent environmental system outcomes that feedback on agents in the social system. Let's take a hypothetical farmer's decision-making process. The farmer chooses what types of crops to plant and the area in which to plant them. This depends on the suitability of his land and the existing land cover. These choices lead to observable patterns of land use change on the landscape. The farmer observes crop yields at the end of the growing season. If it was a good year, it gets a good price, he might make a profit. That in turn can motivate the decision to expand croplands in the next time step, which would change the pattern of land use and transform the ecology in and around the farmer's field. Indeed, the spatial and temporal patterns we observe are the outcomes of the processes operating in that system and give us clues to how they function. ABM's unlike pattern-based modeling approaches explicitly represent the processes that produce patterns of interest and are thus considered process-based models. To illustrate this difference further, let's compare a pattern-based and process-based representation of the same classic predator-prey system. Here we see the system's dynamics model of interactions between sheep and wolves, the numbers of which are the system states of interest. The number of either sheep or wolves is determined by relatively few equations relating rates of interactions, for example bursts or predations, to overall numbers. The result is the classic Laca Volterra predator-prey cycle. In contrast, let's compare an agent-based model of the same sheep and wolf system. Importantly, there are no equations governing the overall number of sheep or wolves. Rather, each agent has a set of equations determining if it moves, reproduces, or eats. Total numbers of sheep and wolves are the emergent result of cumulative interactions between sheep and wolf agents in the environment, represented here as grass. In the ABM, the disaggregated process of agent interactions is modeled explicitly and gives rise to similar predator-prey cycles. This distinction between process-based and pattern-based modeling is particularly important for studying social environmental systems. There's a long history of progress made with pattern-based models in socially or environmentally focused research, but the complexity of social environmental systems presents new challenges to which process-based models are well-suited. Speaking broadly about social environmental modeling, pattern-oriented models have limited usefulness in the simulation of complex interactions and feedbacks because they lack an understanding of the underlying causal mechanisms. Put another way, given two models with equal explanatory power, for example, percent variance explained, the process-based model is preferred because it includes not only the causal factors, but also the causal mechanisms that created the outcome. It is the focus on and explicit treatment of underlying causal mechanisms or interaction processes, which gives ABMs and other process-based approaches an advantage when studying social environmental systems. Based on this bottom-up, process-based paradigm, ABMs are part of a broader approach referred to as generative social science. It is generative in the sense that the objects of study are the processes that generate system-level outcomes. From a few simple rules for interaction, ABMs can recreate complex adaptive phenomena across a wide range of applications. And although interaction rules can be informed by sophisticated behavioral or decision theories, they need not be. Often, the most effective ABMs for learning about how complex systems function are based on first principles of behavior. These include object-seeking behavior such as optimal foraging, profit maximization, or risk aversion. These simple sets of rules or algorithms are then solved individually by each agent to inform its interactions with other agents and the environment. This approach distinguishes ABMs from other modeling approaches and makes them particularly well-suited for studying social environmental systems. It brings us to the end of this first tutorial. A key point I hope you remember is that agent-based modeling is a bottom-up simulation approach that explicitly models the interaction processes that give rise to emergent system-level outcomes. Now that the concepts of agent-based modeling are familiar, the next tutorial will discuss specific components of ABMs and how they work, and provide a range of example applications to highlight the flexibility of the approach. A list of references is provided on the last slide of this tutorial in case you would like more information. I hope this tutorial was useful, and thank you for listening.